Anna DeLuca here. All right, today I am going to be doing a moving straight pour with the full rainbow of colors here. Uh, no silicone. This is going to be all metallics, except for the base color, which is the dioxazine purple. My Liquitex Basics. As you can see, I've already covered my edges. Uh, straight pores sometimes don't really stick to the sides the way that I like. So I will pre-paint the edges. And that way, if it winds up being thin on the edge, it doesn't matter because it is covered. The other colors I will be using, I have DecoArt Americana Decor Metallics in Amethyst, Deep Sapphire, Berry, Copper, Emerald Green, and these are the DecoArt Americana Decor Matte Metallics in Gold. I ran out of the uh, regular metallics in the 24 karat. Sad, sad days. It's hard to come by at the moment. These paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. And that mixture is then thinned with my concoction of 90% water and 10% Floetrol. Uh, I would like to thank everybody for all of the lovely comments about the last video. I played uh, a few of my original songs in there. And uh, y'all were very sweet and kind, so thank you for that. And all of those tunes uh, you can either uh, listen to on Spotify or iTunes, any of those streaming services. And of course, I have the uh, CDs for sale on my website, as well as available for download, if you so choose. So thank you all very, very much for the very sweet uh, words. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards? If you have, you can just fast forward about a minute. If you have not, what we have are 52 cards. Actually, this is the uh, technique we'll be doing today, except with metallics. Uh, this is, uh, so 52 cards, there are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube, the picture of the technique, a little box that has some tips for that particular technique, and a color palette. And then these two boxes can be used together for uh, a two color palette or as the basis of another palette. There are also eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. Use all the colors, use some of the colors, mix and match the palettes with the techniques, hundreds of thousands of combinations for your inspiration. And to all who have already purchased, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I, I know the shameless self-promotion probably gets old, but uh, this is how I'm able to keep bringing you uh, all of the groovy experiments and uh, put food on the table. So uh, I appreciate you indulging. Those cards are available at my website, ginadeluca.net. The consistency that we're working with today is about a two on my consistency scale. Uh, normally I would go with a one if they weren't metallic paints, but because they are metallics, I'm going a hair thicker. The mica does make it appear thicker. So you don't want to over thin it. It makes a mound and then disappears very quickly. First thing I'm going to do is lay down my base coat. I'm going to 
pour some of this in my cup just to make sure I have enough. Sorry about that. Sounds like someone was looking for a phone. That should be good. I definitely prefer working with a base coat. I find the paint slides around much easier. The composition maintains much better. If you don't use a base coat, the paint that hits the canvas first is going to be what sticks to the canvas. And what can happen is it might be the most beautiful part of the painting. And now all of the other paint is rolling over top of it. So it is worth the extra step whenever possible to do the base coat. It makes life easier. All right, my base coat is down and now I'm going to put some paint in a cup. I'm going to pour from up high because I really want these paints to sink and blend. I love when I get those multicolored cells and I get that best when I am blending. Let me try to get this in frame here. Pouring from up high helps it to sink. Sometimes you want it to sink, sometimes you don't. If you don't, uh, a lot of times I'll just pour it down the edge of the cup and that will help to keep that separation. But in this case, we want blending. So I did the amethyst, the berry, and now the copper. I do love a straight pour because from my experience, uh, you don't get mud. For whatever reason, now the gold, this technique keeps the colors true and gives you great cells. The emerald. And the blue, deep sapphire we have here. That is a lot of paint. It is more than a is technically necessary but it is a moving straight pour so I want to be able to have some control over my composition okay here we go I'm going to pour from up high again going for the blending
Okay, I'm already starting to run off the sides. I didn't move fast enough. Let me try to stretch this out a bit so I don't lose too much off that edge. It's all right. It'll still be lovely. Okay, I'm gonna hit this corner. Ooh, a lot of paint, a lot, a lot of paint on here. Hated to tilt that off, but I will get more cells. I'm not worried. This is what straight pores do. Last corner. Okay, I'm going to stretch this a bit more. I know you're all going to yell at me. This is quite a bit of paint. And with straight pores, the more you stretch, the more cells you get. I'm just going to move this around a bit. Probably not tilting any more off. Just giving it a stretch. Just this little bit of back and forth motion can help the cells pop up. What I believe happens is as you do that, the layer that is on the top gets stretched. And the paints that really want to come up through the center or through the, through the paint has that opportunity to.
just give this a quick torch to pop the bubbles. This can also create cells. And if you're not, if you're using a color for your base coat that is not in your core, if you wind up getting tiny little cells, like if I were to use white as my base coat and then pour this over top, when I torch this, I would wind up with tiny white cells. So someone had asked, why do I use colored paint? It's a waste. That's why. It's not a waste. All right, there are some interesting things going on here. I'm going to let this sit and see what happens. And I will bring you in for a close-up. Back in a few. Okay, here it is. I dig it. I love that I still have some of the purple in the center. Creates a focal point, which I really like in my paintings. I like somewhere for the eye to rest, to be drawn to. So we've got some of those little 3D pebble cells over here where the dioxazine did not blend in as much. Look at that sparkle. That green is just amazing. See, these are the multicolor cells that I was talking about. I especially like when they have a nice gradient. I love this area here. I think I'm going to do one with the dioxazine purple that bury the copper and the gold. I love the way that they blend. I think that that's going to be coming up soon. And we have some gold and sapphire cells. That green just really jumps off the canvas. This is a very cool section. So pretty. And that sparkle, gracious. And you can see where that dioxazine comes in. You get a lot of, you know, separation between the cells there. But on this end, no dioxazine, no separation. The metallic paints have a very matte finish to them. And it is the difference in the matte finish and the glossier background that causes this effect with no silicone. Last week I did, or two weeks ago, I missed last week because I was having some back issues. Uh, but there was a painting that I did with a swipe using that theory. And I did indeed get cells without using silicone in a swipe. Actually, why don't I show that to you? Okay, here is the dried piece that I did, the swipe from the do's and don'ts challenge. So looking at it from this angle, it doesn't really appear to be much difference between the color that is laced, which was just like a 
phthalo blue and green and white mix. But if you look at it from the right angle, oh, let me see if I can find that angle on the camera. Okay, that kind of, so you can see that the light paint is glossy, but the surrounding paints are shiny because of the metallics, but they are actually very matte. And anywhere that is shiny is that light color, even if you can't see it from certain angles, it's there. But that is why I'm obsessed with straight bores, because I can get cells without using silicone But I thought that came out pretty cool, kind of has that bloom effect without the uh, bazillion ingredients. Not quite it. I might need the bazillion ingredients to make that happen. Well, that is it for this one. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Please do like, share, and subscribe. If you found this information useful, why not share it? Sharing is caring. Do check out the description box below for links to my website, the Amazon store. Anything that you purchase off the entire site of Amazon, I make a small commission at no additional cost to you. So I would greatly appreciate it. Also in the description box is the link to our Facebook group. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Get some inspiration. All right, y'all. That's it. I hope you have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.